Indeed. As it is to see Pavel Yerkel, who I'm going to call the Czech Michael Smith. He really does look like him. He's got the same haircut. He has got the same haircut, you're right. 83. Carol Sudlar Czech. There we have just had a, a little word from Jacques Noyla, the, uh, the main man for darts in Holland. Forget Roman van Barneveld, forget Michael van Gogh. Jacques Noyla is the boy when it comes to Dutch darts. Of course, we've seen Carol Sudlar Czech play at the World Cup, but he did play on the European Tour as well. There we go, not the first Czech. Won't be the last as well, because this year we're going there. We are. First appearance for the European Tour in Prague. And we know there's a market there because they had a big exhibition earlier this year. And they could have sold that out many times over. The demand for that night of darts was absolutely enormous, I'm told. Encouraging signs. And as soon as we got the information about Prague, we were all very excited, weren't we, Dan? Because we've been dearly wanting to go to somewhere like the Czech Republic or Hungary for a couple of years now. And the way that the European Tour has been going over the last few seasons, we can only see more progression towards the east. Okay, oh. he's gone 1 1 8 for treble 18 first. You and I have had many conversations Easy. about it. It's the wrong way to go. There's just no two ways about it. I you're agree. In trouble with the first dart, and you're not guaranteed a dart at a double. I mean, why would you do that? Why? 22. The only thing I can think of is because his opponent was nowhere near a finish. Yeah, well, that finish oh, yeah. has been plucked Same by Pavel Jurgel. It's a good start to his yeah. debut. And I like what I see. I think it's a very smooth action. He looks pretty comfortable up there. And I think when you get a debut, Dan, as well, where there's not a lot of people here, it's easier to just get into it. You're not as nervous because there's not as many people watching you. What you really want, though, is to get through this game and have a game on a Saturday here in Leverkusen because Leverkusen on a Saturday is quite good indeed. Yes, it's like two different tournaments, isn't it? 100. And, you know, we've, uh, we've made a big thing over the years about the European Tour being a fantastic way for players to fast-track themselves to getting big stage experience. And, yes, you are playing in big arenas on big 64. stages. But if you're only playing on the Friday afternoon, there's th there are exceptions. I remember Graz was pretty much sold out all the way through the weekend. 2,000 fans there from dart one on a Friday afternoon. But sometimes you do end up Friday afternoon game, and it's quite quiet, sparse crowd. So you've got to win your opening game to get hey, that new Euro Tour experience. It's a great point you just made about Graz because I, remember, I still remember my facial expression when we walked in on the Friday thinking it was going to be quiet and it was what? anything oh, but that, which makes us look forward to Graz even more this year when it takes place in the first week of May. Yeah, absolutely bouncing that place was almost like a, a small version of Minehead because it was next to a lake. It, it was. Now treble 19 or 15. 19's route for Borland. Wasn't a good opening leg from William. But he's put in a decent one here. It may not matter though. Oh, what a dart that is. Oh, my word. Even Borland was looking on from the back of the stage there. He looked impressed with that more than anything. His facial expression in the background there, Dan, was, was a bit of a picture. It looked a bit like a ghost that was just saying, ooh, because that really was a sensational finish. Yeah, pretty decent start to life on the European Tour for Pavel Jurkel. 15 data there to go with a 16 data in the opening leg and a 156 check out. Oh, Not bad. Well, in the early part of the European Tour, Dan, you know this more than most because you've been there since its inception, pretty much. We started the search for Whoa. the German superstars because that's where predominantly the, the events were. They're starting to branch out now, so we're looking at potential superstars from other countries. So we're now on the search for the next big Danish superstar because you can't leave it to Pearl Larson the rest of 
rest of time. He's been around forever. We need the next superstar to come, especially when we go to Copenhagen in June. And of course, we need the superstars to be found in the Czech Republic, and I believe we will find them. Sedlček has been the main man for a very long time, but maybe, just maybe, Jürgen is the guy to take it a little bit further forward. Well, it's not as if Jürgen's a complete unknown. You know, last year made the final of the, the Europe Cup, the WDF, in a singles format. That is some achievement. Yeah. Not an easy tournament to get to the final to start with, but you know, you've got to give him a lot of credit. Am I right in thinking Mark Webster won that one year? I think he won it twice. I think, twice. He, I think he defended it. I think he's one of the only people to ever do that. He did, well, you're right. Can he do it again? <laughs> if he'd have done that again, I would have ripped that finish out of Rima van Barneveld's dart wallet and given it to Jürgen. Yeah, who needs Barn? <laughs> We've got him here. We've got the Czech Barney. We don't need the, the Danish Michael Van Gogh. Czechoslovakian Raymond van Barneveld. Hasn't missed a double yet. Double ten. 46. No panic indeed because Borland hasn't really shown us a scoring power at all in this match yet. Just get the feeling he's a little bit unsettled. 48. Yeah, just looking a bit frustrated and confused at the minute. I mean. Yeah, that Probably won't help. He had a great opportunity to get himself settled by you know, hitting a two darter in the previous leg, but he was denied that by Jurkel. And you can see the frustration from Boland as he starts talking to the board, and that is what's known as a darting tell from the commentary box. The good thing for William, though, is that his opponent can't see that. I've always been an advocate for. If you are going to show frustration, make sure your opponent can't see it. Don't fuel his, his fire. Don't give him ammunition. Have you always been an advocate that of that Not point? Not really. Like, have you always practiced what you preach? Most of the time, but there have <laughs> been some cracks in the armour. Mm, okay. 13 events on the European Tour this year, and already I'm getting jibed by my <laughs> colleague and friend, Dan Dawson. Long may that continue. That's better from Ball, and that's a lovely 140 to give himself a small advantage, but he has got a three-leg deficit here. Yeah, I mentioned he'd uh, made a bit of a breakthrough at the World Trophy playing in the BDO system last year, Borland. As Pavel Jurkul piles in his first 180, the first one of this contest, and he's down to a finish first. Yeah, beat Conan Whitehead, who has got his tour card now, and has been playing some decent stuff. Beat Gary Anderson at the weekend on the Pro Tour, Conan. Proving to be a bit of a thorn in the side of Ball and his Pavel. Getting those sneaky 60s. You know, getting his score down. No real let up from Pavel. And as soon as William got that little advantage, Pavel came back at him. He's showing some really good composure in 62 now. Another one of those will be handy. Double 16. A little bit too far north. That one. Geographically, it was in Poland. It wasn't in his home country. So, can ball and get this ton? Surely you stay on the 60 there, not tops, tops. Oh, what are you doing, man? Neither here nor there. Yeah. But, I mean, it looked a perfect guide for you, didn't it? It didn't need any... There was no need to go tops, tops. Right down the right-hand side. And he's lucky that didn't go into double 10. But that one's right in the middle of double 6. That's almost signified what kind of game this has been. There have been a few poor darts, but there's been some great ones as well. And ordinarily, apart from that 156 that we had, we've seen a poor dart followed by a good dart. 4-0 to Pavel Jurkel, and probably have to say, this might be going against what I thought was going to happen here. Well, I'd heard good things about William Borland, and he has had a couple of quarterfinals on the development tour already this year, but... What you have to take into account is that this is all new. Pavel Jurkel is, you know, you made the final of the Europe Cup singles last year. Pavel Jurkel's been around. He's done quite a lot. He is a veteran 
compared to Willie Ball. I mean, Pablo Jurka was playing the World Masters in 2004. Uh, 2004, Willie Ball would have been about six. So we'll cut him some slack here. But it is a learning experience, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to go and get the opportunities where you can. 99. So that next time you come back on the Euro Tour, you are stronger and more able to compete. Yeah, that's right. And Borland has a, a wonderfully fluid action, which is easy on the eye. Got to watch that right elbow drop, though. It's a lot that coaches and pundits alike have, have talked about with players like Jamie Lewis. Mm. When that throwing arm you got the elbow at a right angle at any point in the throw. You've really got to maintain that height. And what I've seen from Borland here is just that little drop. And if that accentuates, then you will find that he'll go high, low, and trying to find his range. But when he gets it right, he can be destructive, very much like Jamie Lewis. It does look I mean, very smooth, that action. But you're right, there is a bit of a drop of an elbow. Okay, Yurko looking to guarantee himself a dart at a double, but he'll only get one. That's a trade-off when you go bullseye first dart for an 81 or an 83. He won't go bull here, William. Oh, yeah. He'll wish that he had a shot at the bull. One of the reasons why a lot of people on 107 go 19s now is because you've got outs. You've you got hit the very seven or three either side, you've still got an out shot. Absolutely. And Jurkel can punish and put himself within one. No Not with that. That must have slipped. That's a good inch low. A reprieve for Borland. Is that what he needs to get himself on the board? 37. He's disgusted. Yeah, understandable. First crack he's had at doubles in this one, and it's not gone well. The sweat is already teeming off Pavel Yerkel. But he does pin double four, and that is 5 0. The whitewash is a possibility. And. William Borland has not done himself justice here. Look what he did in qualifying for this. And 42. I was listening to the, the podcast the lads do, Burton and Alex Moss do, the weekly darts cast, and they were talking about the European Tour qualifiers being the most important tournaments on the oh. darts calendar because getting on the Euro Tour, there's so much money available. It is so vital for your ranking and getting into all sorts of things oh, that they are becoming massively important you might only have to win two games probably three tops if you play in the uk qualifier but you win those games you're guaranteed a thousand pounds in ranking money Whoa. now william borland beat luke woodhouse who's been playing really good stuff aaron monk and steve lennon in a row all with averages in the 90s Whoa. so this lad has got talent he can play and he's young and he's raw now he's nowhere near that at the minute but this is just going to have to be a learning experience for them. What we find, though, Dan, is that typically Scottish players take a while to find their feet. Gary Anderson found his real straps in his 40s. Thornton, the all-time great Robert Thornton, mm -hmm. late 30s, early 40s, now in the 50s. Jockey Wilson wasn't a spring chicken when he was playing at his best. Les Wallace wasn't exactly young when he won the world title in the 90s. So... Maybe that's the theme with Scottish players. Look, it's Peter Wright. Yeah, that's very true. No, Peter Wright was, was nearly walked away from the game because things weren't going well for him. Jurkel could end it here. It's still on. Double 12 for a 141. Oh. Oh. A check can't check out of the 141 and Borland to avoid the whitewash. He does get a dart at tops. And it doesn't matter what angle you look at it from, Willie. It is an in. Got the last dart he has thrown in this match. It's very likely. There's a big puncture mark in double six where he hit it before. Can he hit that? He can't. And Borland gets another chance. Well, four match darts missed. 
Ball and cannot miss inside, and that's a really good dart. And a little smile from Willie Ball, and he does avoid the whitewash. And good on him. You can allow yourself a little sigh of relief there and say to yourself, at least if I do lose this, I didn't lose to nil. But there's a definitive swagger about William Ball, and when he's walking, he's. You know, when you see Steve Beaton walking around the practice room, he's just got that swagger about him. Well, oh, yeah. William Ball and. It's just very loose and languid. 93. And that's a good quality to have in tense atmospheres because you see all these other players who are you know, plugged into their, their earphones and they're all very tense, very much like Justin Pipe was when he walked on earlier. Well, that was, that was quite, uh, <laughs> quite the thing. Yeah, he's a purposeful strike from Justin. And they've changed his walk-on tune for some reason. And he's back in black. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of that in due course. I'll when tell you what, if plays like that, Ian White's got some issues tomorrow because it was pretty impressive from Justin. Indeed. But William Borland's got a nice, relaxed aura about him. I think if he can continue that, all the better for him. But I don't know if there's been a, a time in his young career where he's been 5-0 down no, in 165 yet. He's going to need some more misses from Muirkel, that's for sure. We well, nearly won it on a 1-4-1 earlier. You're not going to win it on a 1-4-3 because that's a mile away from the treble 20. 40. Darren Webster, the number 16 seed, awaits the winner of this one. You know how we said that Muirkel looks a little bit like Michael Smith? I, I think Borden looks like a young Paul Hogan, a darting Paul Hogan, that is. But Yerkel, 96, will get it done. Won't get it done. Now, 56. if Boland gets this 81, he starts to ask questions. He starts to get his own little bit of momentum. 12 in ball. 34. He gambled on the treble. It came up short, and he got a shot at the ball, but it wasn't his best effort. So this should be over now. Three dots at toss for Yerkel. Well, it started off very, very strongly for Pavel Yerkel. Game shot. He kind of falls over the line against young William Borland, but a 6-1 victory is enough for Yerkel to make it through to the second round. The check will go up against the number 15 seed, Darren Webster, the demolition man, in tomorrow's action when the seeds enter the fray. This afternoon, we get to see UK Open quarter-finalist Ross Smith. We get to see Ted Evans, who's playing some excellent darts today. The return of Artuk Dietuk, Jihan Artuk, the German legend. But coming up in a moment, it's Latvia's number one, Matas Rasma, taking on Matty Denham. Pavel. Your debut, uh, debut on the European Tour, 6-1, 156 finish, not bad. Yeah, I think also. <laughs> yeah, it's my first PDC uh, European Tour tournament. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, it's a surprise for me also. You, you did really well for being nervous. I wish I played like that when I was nervous. So next round you play against uh, Darren Webster. It's probably going to get a little bit more difficult than, than, uh, than William Ball it was. So what, what do you expect for that? Yeah, of course, it's an absolutely different match, but I look forward for this match because that's why, why I play darts. I want to meet the best players in the world, and I am happy I can play with him. Ja, ich habe gerade zu ihm gesagt, äh, 6 zu 1 bei seinem Debüt, 156er Finish reingehauen. Er ist auch äh, total zufrieden damit. Er war zwar sehr nervös bei seinem Debüt, sagt er, aber ich fand, man hat es ihm gar nicht so sehr angemerkt. In der nächsten Runde wartet Darren Webster auf ihn. Er sagt, es wird natürlich schwieriger werden, aber dafür spielt er Dart, um sich mit den Besten zu messen. Und wir sagen herzlichen Glückwunsch an Pavel Jirka!